Web containers require that your application be packaged in a very specific format in order to be able to run it. So one of the important things you have to learn when building a Java-based or servlet-based um, cloud service is how do you package up your code in a way that any web container that follows the Java specification can run your code. So there's a standard format for packaging your code in order to deploy it and run it on a web application container. And the way that you do that is through what's called a WAR file or web application resource file. So the WAR file is where you package all of your code and all of the configuration information in order to deploy your code to a web application container. Now, one of the important things to note is this isn't really a fancy file at all. There's no special work that you have to do to create one of these files other than follow some basic guidelines. A WAR file is just a zip file that follows a standard directory structure for placing your code and configuration files inside. And there are a couple important pieces of the web of the WAR file. The first one is the web int folder. And one of the important things to note about this folder is that it is a private folder that specifies configuration files, code, and other things that you don't ever want returned to the clients that are requesting information from your web container. So this is things like the configuration files that may specify where your database servers are located and what ports they're on, security things that you wouldn't necessarily want exposed. So the WebInf directory is where you store that information. Now we talked before about the web.xml file. The web.xml file is the file that tells the web container, these are all of the servlets in my application. Here are the class names of the classes that I want to serve as servlets and receive various requests from clients. And that web.xml file that specifies the mapping that the, ser the server's web container should use to determine which servlet receives a particular uh, uh, HTTP request is specified inside this web.xml file which lives in the web int folder. And obviously, this is a configuration file that you don't want your clients to see for security reasons, and also potentially for proprietary information or implementation reasons. So the web XML file lives within this web int folder. What's important to note is that everything else, all of the other directories, which you can have arbitrary directories, like you could have a JavaScript directory where you store JavaScript files, you could have HTML, you could have views, or you could have views, you could have whatever directory structure you want in the rest of the web application resource or WAR file. But the important thing to note is that this is always going to be a private directory, the web app file. So anything you put anywhere else in your WAR file, the web container can potentially serve that resource up in its raw form and return it to a client that's requesting it. So all of your really sensitive stuff always needs to go inside of the web int folder. And there are a couple of other sensitive things that typically go inside of this folder. One is your classes directory. And this is where your compiled Java files for your application, for example, the classes that you have created to implement servlets this is where those files will go. And they will be laid out directly beneath the classes folder just using your typical Java package structure. And you'll have all of your class files within various directories underneath the classes directory. The other thing that you'll typically see in WebEmp is a lib directory. And lib then will have various jars that your application depends on, like foo.jar or whatever else. But you can create any of your own directories as well underneath WebEnf that can store custom configuration information or organize things. 
But the important thing to always remember is if you have something that you don't ever want to be returned to a client, it needs to go in WebInf. If it's not in WebInf, if it's somewhere else in some other folder, then the web container could potentially return it. So the way that you create one of these WAR files is you create a directory structure that matches what you want your WAR file to look like. That is, you create a folder that has a, inside of it has a WebInf folder, has the various web XML, classes, lib, the other important folders that you need within it to specify the configuration and the code for your app. It has the various resources that are at the root of the WAR or all folders from the root. And then you simply take that folder containing all of this stuff, zip it up into a file, and name it .war. And you've created a WAR file that can be deployed to a web container. So it's not difficult at all. All you need to know is the basic rules. Create your WebEmp file, create your web.xml, put your classes in classes after they've been compiled, and put all of your rest of your resources hanging somewhere off of the root or folders from the root of the WAR file. Now, there are lots of tools that can be used to automatically set up this structure for you to build your code and place it into a WAR file. There's automated build tools like Maven, which we won't go into in this class, or Gradle that can do this for you. Uh, App Engine does this in the background when you deploy to Google's App Engine Cloud, and we'll see some of that in later lessons. But all of this is very simple, and you can do it by hand if you want to, or you can write scripts to do it, or use some of these tools.